Hello, ladies and gents. Today you are joining me in Catford, in Lewisham. Today I am stood in a, another special place in London. These are prefabricated homes that were built post World War II, post the Blitz. It's also interesting who built them. Have a look here. During Rommel's campaign in Africa, in the Africa Corps, the People who were taken prisoner during that time, Italian and German prisoners, were actually used to build these homes directly after the war. Allegedly, or more so what we call today key worker types. But as you can see, they have their majesty still around them. It almost reminds you, they almost remind you of an American or a Canadian trailer park. You know, very unique, very fantastic. Don't worry, not anyway. So, um, but I love, uh, it's just like when we was in Rupel Street a little while ago, you see the old fashioned car there, sort of doing it justice. I uh, once again, I can't help but wonder if um, they've got that just to help it blend in. It's got all of these quaint little back roads. Now, this, was originally called, well, it is still called Excalibur Estate. And it was a massive estate with loads of these prefabricated homes. But now they've all sort of gone by the wayside. These are the few left, there's a few listed ones left. And you're not allowed to buy these outright anymore, as far as I understand. This is charming like that. It's very quiet and serene for where it is as well. This is a very unusual site for this part of London or London in general. Most places in London are so expensive that, you know, th these sort of structures just don't cut it for people. There's, this land is worth too much to people. They want to put skyscrapers or estates on it or something that they can make money out of, you know, somewhere to rent offices, a warehouse, something. These roads will have an Arthurian Theme, which means that they're connected to the story of King Arthur. This is why it's Excalibur Estate. And we're just going to have a walk down one of these lovely alleys, but first we're reminded there of where the site ends, where the community ends, or what was once a community. And that's all going to be new builds. We're going to get to some new builds soon. All very quaint. Keep coming, coming, man. You really don't see places like this anymore at all. Obviously, <coughs> just got done by a spider web. Obviously, um, I was talking with my cameraman about it before we got here and just how unique this is, especially for us as London. Jesus. my limbo skills. There are a lot of people stick. That's it, you're doing well. That's it, Kevin. Yeah. Look at the contrast, look. So here, where it says protected by guardians, I'll explain this quickly. Now, what this means is, is that you can't actually buy this place. You, it's a scheme where you put your name on basically a, a list and you're contacted and told, we need you to fill this space. You'll be given low rent. Here's the rules and so on. And it's sort of a clever way of keeping things how you want them if you are the, the true landowner. And just down there is L&Q who were pushing to change this place for a long time finally got their own way.
I, I personally, I adore these little back alleys here. Come, come down here, come down. Here. So we, we just walk down one, just like this, like the other, um, like this one. And they're so charming because they're so different. You'd be forgiven for thinking you was in somewhere in Essex or something, but you know this did used to be Kent years ago. Just it, it really, I mean, these are not obviously beautiful cult, uh, cultured uh, relics. These are prefabs, you know. But it's not the point. They're still a reminder of a more simplest, uh, simplistic way of life. So when we was in Rupel Street, it was all about people working together despite the poverty. But they still lived in what today are beautiful homes. These are, you know, in comparison, very run down. But dare I say, they're more wholesome. Um, they're a lot more appealing to me than any of the new builds that I see scattered around London. But it does sort of give off that sentiment, doesn't it, of how quiet and serene this place is or always was. When this place was in full flow, I can imagine it was a very social, very active place. Now it's just another shadow of itself. Okay, so just before we go and have a comparative look at the new estate, the new Excalibur with the old one, we'll look at one of these alleys just one last time, because they are charming, very quaint, very nice, very quiet. I think you get the message by now, just what this place is or might have been like. Very strange to us as Londoners to see places like this. If you were to show me something like this, I'd have assumed it was knocked down a long time ago. Now this little alley full of acorns is perfect because it's going to bring us out on the um, new world, the new. The new builds. Many people might be thinking, they're absolutely lovely, Ben. What are you what, what are you trying to say? What are you complaining about? But that's what makes us different, isn't it? This is one of the last remaining buildings that would mean anything to people of the past. This church here. They've obviously replaced the roof. Let's go and have a quick look. This is St. Mark's Church, as you can see. Catford, South End, and Downham Team, Diocese of Southwark. Of course, it would be C of E. You're not going to get a Catholic church built here post 1940s, are you? So that would have been packed, I imagine. Because even if you wasn't actually a believing Christian, I bet you there wasn't that much to do around here. So you'd probably just pop down to see your friends. It, say there was a Sunday service going on. I bet you all the kids or whoever else would be loitering around if they weren't forced to go to church. So this would have been a real hub of social activity, seeing family members, being peer pressured by your mum or your nan to turn up, you know, this was probably a very relevant building to anyone that lived in those prefabs. I mean, it's probably become more relevant to these people that live in the normal homes now. You know, it's clearly still in use. But um, obviously, you can tell by looking at it, this isn't a usual, it's, it's not what a usual community church would look like. It's obviously come from the 
prefab community. And this is where we come up to Excalibur Drive. So we came in the other end, we've just done a loop now. Now, I couldn't help but mention to you LNQ's motto because homes matter. Now, I could try and give you a long winded spiel about culture and history, but I think the imagery from this place sort of does it for you, especially since these are, they're not just pointless cabins, these were put up to keep London moving after the Blitz. These were built after 1945. So what I'm going to do now, we, we, we come from the road directly behind the cameraman, but I think this is the best place to show you the contrast. Because if I just walk this way ever so slightly, what you first get is some of these odd looking estates. All right, now I don't know that, that these are homes, but it looks like a community hall or some odd chapel to me. So the cameraman's right, you see there's another site there. You're right, cameraman. All right, and then directly behind me, come around here for me. It was really strange, a resident, uh, an old resident just pulled up to ask us for where a road he used to live was. He had um, come down here for me, come around. He had said, uh, oh boys, I used to live here. Do you know where such and such road is? And I said, that's why we're here, to make a video on the fact it's disappearing. And um, he told us a few bits, but look at that in comparison. That's, that's the world he just drove down to see. So he used to live in the prefabs and um, coming down here, he's quite disheartened by it. Look. There was a long appeal for this to go ahead, and it was in the 2000s that LNQ finally got their permission to go ahead with it. And of course, it would be on a Mayor of London scheme, wouldn't it? But everything that's about to pop up in there that could be anywhere else in the world is going to look probably just like that. How unimpressive and unoriginal. Right now, I'm just put back in, into modernism, aren't I? So if you're watching this particular scene here right now, it looks so unspecial. Why does it look unspecial? Because the modern world is very unspecial. It's, it's not unique. It's nothing like all of the fantastic architecture and cultures that come before today's time. Tell you what as well, being an old resident, that guy, who came down here, he won't know anyone. Because everyone in these homes now, they're not old residents. They've been, they've been moved out and the people in here are, are part-time. So it, it's not like going back to your old area and seeing people, oh, I recognize him and him. No, it's a completely different world. So we're now at the other end of the site. Come here. Come here. So the other end of the gate there, that's where I was stood making my comparisons. And this is the scale of what they've knocked down. There'll be more than this, but this is a part of the scale of what they've knocked down and was all prefabs. It's why that chap who we was talking to that used to live here, he was the other side of this. He was trying to get in here. That's where he grew up. Not there anymore. He just missed that. He's just got the apple. Well, come here, look. You got it then? Yeah. Great. So he's just using a brick to throw at an apple tree to get apples out. And he's narrowly missing the cars with his brick was coming down. Now this entire estate, or what was this entire estate, 
was built in well on top of what was Forster Park and there's a little bit of it left which remains but this was once a place for people to come and enjoy a park then it become uh, a place of relief for people who had been dislodged from their homes post the blitz and now it's just um, another modern estate from the looks of it but if you have the time I suggest you come down and have a look at this place while it's still there. There's still a few listed buildings, but as we know, listed buildings are only important to those who think they're important. After all, that land there is worth a lot of money. If they decide, oh, I know what we'll do. Why don't we move the prefabs and then sell the land? Oh, we accidentally damaged a few of the prefabs as we moved them. Sorry about that, too late. So that's how listed buildings work like the pub in Kilburn that I covered, that was, it, it had been listed and then they demolished it anyway, or they was intending to list it. And when they found out, they demolished it anyway. So what does a listing mean if you're a developer or someone with money? You'd just rather pay the fine, wouldn't you? But there are little reminders here and there among all of this new world of the world we left behind us.